<clears throat> Hello, welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel and today's video is going to be on placing your student in the McGuffey's spelling program that I sell on Etsy and Amazon. I've been getting people asking me that, you know, aren't starting from straight from the very beginning and are somewhere, you know, in their child's elementary journey. And they're like, I like your program, I wanna use it, but where do I start? Because the lesson numbers in the book, it's broken down into word lists and I have them broken out by lesson according to the plan. But those lesson numbers do not correspond to the lesson numbers in the McGuffey's Eclectic Spelling Book, the revised edition. And so today I'm gonna to go do a quick flip through of each level and show you uh, a few quick things that might be helpful if you are using the program. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to use your spelling book to place them in a level. Okay, let's go. Okay, so if you're looking at your McGuffey's Eclectic Spelling Book, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just to start out with a test straight from the book to see where they start running into hiccups where you need to stop and address. So I would just help give them a piece of paper and a pencil and I would just go probably like section by section. Just give it to them orally. Um, I do, these are all single syllable words right here, but when it gets to multi-syllable words, um, I'll also give it to them syllable by syllable. So I might say uh, master, mass, ter, master, right? And see if they recognize that word and if they can encode it themselves. So you may need to spread this over like a week or so just because I, you know kids will start getting like fatigue mistakes if you push them on something like this too long. But just pay attention to how they're doing and you might do like a set of words in the morning, a set in the afternoon, and then um, and just keep checking them, you know, after they do them. I would say, I mean, I want them to be, you know, encoding these words pretty accurately. So I, if they are missing, you know, more than two um, in a lesson, then you may want to stop there. Like this is the, this is our stopping point. Cause we just want, we don't want to leave holes in their education, right? So that's my advice for finding out. So wherever you stopped in here, this is the corresponding chart. So for level one in McGuffey's spelling, if your child stops somewhere between lessons one and six in the McGuffey spelling book, I would put them into McGuffey spelling level one. I'll just give you a quick look at it and what it looks like. This is the um, Amazon version, like the pre-printed version. You can get, see it's pretty thick, right? And, but there's all, it's also available on Etsy as a printable. And what comes with the printables is also all of the flashcards for all of the spelling words for that level. So that, I, I don't have a way of including that on Amazon. So you can only get that through the Etsy shop. I think there's also like a bonus dictation sheet you can get um, with the Etsy too. But what's in here for level one, there's gonna be a quick how to use this book, all of your word lists. There are 30, and then I gave you three review lists at the end of this level. So that all the books follow the same general pattern, they just level up in complexity and obviously the words are leveling up as well as you go. So we always start out day one with an analyze words. So for level one, you're just gonna you know, say the word to them, you know, have them repeat it back to you, make sure they're pronouncing it correctly, and then have them count the sounds or the phonemes and write the appropriate number of blanks. I do count like digraphs and things, like uh, if it's the word loud, I say l, ow, d, that's three blanks, because OU is gonna count as one phoneme, right? Same with like S H C H T H those things. And then um, this is also a good day to go over the diacritics. But you can see that all of these words have a short A. So you may have already been telling, you may have already discussed with them um, what letters are vowel sounds. We call certain sounds vowel sounds and certain letters correspond with those sounds. A 
is marked like this with the, this is technically a brevet. I, so I taught it to my second son as a macaroni because it looks like a piece of macaroni to him. And my third son calls it a smile. Put a smile for a short vowel. We smile at short vowels. Ah, 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 like that. And one of the great things about the revised editions of the readers and the spelling book is that they do include those diacritics for you. So you can just learn them as you go. Just And if you don't know these, you will learn them with your child right alongside them. So you see, these are talking about short sounds of A. And they're even giving for some of these later ones, like gap, they're giving a like a macron over the G to show that it's a hard G and not a soft G. A soft G would have like a little dot over it. The word as, you can see there, the second sound of S, Z. They do there's like a line and like a, Cuck it upside down T under it or something. Okay. You can also, um, so just a word on diacritical marks. Yeah, you can teach them the word, you can teach them the words like sm smile or if it's a macron, I call it a flat hat. <laughs> and you can transition them over to brevet, macron, things like that light later. And because I think those really foreign words, um, I think that's going to be harder to, it's better if it's something that they, can recognize like that's a smile or whatever you know and this and paying attention to the diacritical marks will help uh, draw focus to pronunciation which is important as well okay the next day you usually write with the words three times just have them write it as best they can spelling aloud as they write and by spelling I mean like sounding it out like k, like every going k, ah or A, ah, right. just that three times. For levels one and two, I do give word sentences to go with the spelling word so they can see it in context. So I am glad to learn the bird laid an egg. And then they can draw word sentences that day as well. It says pick words you didn't know the meaning of and draw their sentences as pictures. Write the word in the box with the picture. So I wrote an egg, right? Uh, pad of paper, building word pyramids from each spelling word. Again, um, I if it's something, let's say the word was cash, I write C, C, A, C, A, S, H. I wouldn't, I wouldn't separate the S and the H because they are, you know, married, <laughs> those digraphs. It's like you always keep them together because they represent one sound rainbow words so stamp or write words and then clap or tap syllables as you read them so rainbow writing or stamping right i just use a different color for every letter or every phoneme and then pattern sort so the easiest thing for me is to use spelling ruled flash cards um there is a list of all the spelling rules in the back that's right that i use and um, so you could go through and just make your own out of like index cards or something. I also have some spelling vocabulary here that they should, you know, you should at least you should be familiar with. So you can point it out as you see it. Um, but here, this is a set you can just print and cut, and I'll link it for you in the description box too. This is the day patterns are is you know, especially at the beginning, is a day that they'll need more help with you from you with, right? And you may just go ahead and, and look at the word list and pull out the appropriate ones, anyways, at the early levels. So. These were all just VC and CVC or closed syllable short vowel words. So this was like, this is literally level, you know, one, lesson one. So it's very simple. So some of them you may not even need, there's not even like a special rule for it. You know, I would just call also words like this. You could also just call them phonetic. Every letter is spelling its first sound. And just on another note, um, I picked this up from, I think it was Alpha Phonics, like Logic of English, there's a bit you know, more modern stuff, is that people have um, put together lists of how frequently a letter represents a specific sound. So that's why we say the first sound of A is A, ah, not A, because it most of the time, it's most commonly says A. Ah. Its second sound is A, its third sound is A, ah, and of course it can make a schwa, you know, a. Uh, pretty often too, but 
So I do like to teach them what it's, what's first sound is uh, to try first, right? If, if they're sounding out, especially in these early words, which is something I believe the McGuffey's does not point out to you. I heard um, a quote recently, which I thought was really good. It was that English is a, it's a morpho. So I heard two things. I heard it's a morpho phonetic meaning morphology, like the meaning of word parts uh, and phonetic like sounds uh, language. It's not just a rules-based language because you know English is such a conglomerate of languages. I also heard that it's not a rule-based language, it's a statistic-based language. And I was like, oh, that's so much more accurate actually because we do have these like rules or patterns, but there's also all the exceptions, right? Because a lot of the exceptions are like not, they're like they're not uh, originating from English themselves or it's just changed because our pronunciation has changed over time, but the spelling didn't change. So there's all the, that kind of, a lot of it does follow the rules though. So I do think they're worth studying because statistically they will bear out more often than not. Think of it as it most likely says <laughs> this. And that's why we have to really study words and not just the rules because so many of the words, like I always tell the kids, I'm like, how, why did they spell it that way? There's no rule for why you spell something like you are or I are, right? Um, why is bird and curd? One spelled as I are and one is spelled you are, even though they both end with D and, you know, that stuff. There's no r rule governing that. So you just have to be familiar with them, right? Same with a lot of like what a lot of people would call heart words. The spelling is, is atypical and you just kind of have to memorize that word and put, you know, memorize it by heart. That's how I always think of it uh, with that heart word thing. And the only way you can do that is just by being familiar with words. So you have to like study them, write with them, um, read them a lot and hear them to know how they're pronounced. So another reason why I am not anti audiobook, I was just, I was just like commenting with people we were talking over on the Robinson curriculum um, community page, not the official page, the community page. And we've been talking about uh, listening to audiobooks uh, versus reading. And yeah, I'm not against it because especially with, I, I noticed when we, my oldest son started reading the G.A. Henty books, there's so much vocabulary in there that is not um, prevalent today. And, you know, they're, they're often set in European uh, settings or the Middle East or in Africa, they're all over the world, right? So there's all these words in that book that we will we'll never hear um, just in conversation. And so I like him actually to listen to the audiobook while he reads it so he can see it, but also hear the proper pronunciation. Anyways, okay, enough about that. Back to spelling. Um, so pattern sort. So what I do the pattern sort, with, in the early years, you may just want to uh, pull out whatever rule fits and just and just give it to them and have them read it um, and, and like even maybe even copy down the rule or something um, spelling test obviously just dictate and then copy it or, or and then correct it and then you're going to explore and correct anything they've missed write correctly three to five times anything they missed cover it retest them on it and then move on so the lessons the like themselves the word list there is a lot of review because I pulled multiple lists often from the same lesson that was in the McGuffey spelling book. So while these are short A, like CVC and VC words, I pick up with some CVC words again, right? But it's just got some different, um, some different phonemes. And then say that one goes on forever. Then it switches to short E words. But then again, it starts with short E words, but now we're adding in blends. So there's like purposefully some overlaps that oftentimes in the next list, they're getting a little bit of review so they don't forget what they learned in the last list. <laughs> you can always do that too. If there was a word, if they only missed like one word or something and there was some, that's like this one word tripping them up, you can just add it into your next list. Just keep carrying it forward so they keep getting the practice with that word over and over. Okay, that's level one. Okay, if your child, if you stopped them in the McGuffey spelling book uh, with between lessons six and 15, I would say they fall into McGuffey spelling level two. Here, how to use this book. 
You've got your list in the front. You've got syllable division patterns, syllable division steps, syllable types, spelling rules, and there should be some spelling vocab back there too. Spelling vocabulary words. So you can see it's gonna be the same setup. You are going to, again, analyze the words. This is also a time where if they don't know the meaning of the word, right? Like I'd say rave. He loves to rave about his favorite sports team, right? Put it in like a sentence form or something. And then you're gonna have them parrot it back to you, rave. And they're like, rave, rave. Then have them break it down, r a v. To me, that's only three sounds because that e is silent at the end, right? So then you're gonna, once they figure out how many sounds, they go ahead and dictate, tell them how to fill it out, and then put that silent E on the end. And I call these influencing arrows. And we're gonna start talking about the silent E rules and how it can, an E can hop over one, one letter, one consonant to influence a vowel over here. And it's good, it's good that they learn that rule, it's so common. Um, so yeah, it's influenced. The reason that the A is long is because of this silent E. There's also the rule that the E, this E would need to be there because English words do not end in I, U, V, or J, right? So both of those rules are going to be in here, which you're going to get to later, but you can talk it through, you can introduce the idea here as you see them, right? This is a floss word. Commonly, when we have a short vowel, followed by an F, L, S, or Z, we double the final consonant. Okay, write the words three times. So this time write it normal, write it with their opposite hand, write it with their eyes closed. Drawing word sentences. So here's uh, word sentences for those words. And then they can draw word sentences for words that they didn't understand. So it says, Pick words you didn't know the meaning of and draw their sentences as pictures. Write the word in the box with the picture, it's right there. Look them up in the dictionary and write their part of speech. It's a noun, right? Mostly nouns, verbs, and adjectives, right? And this was the word tying. And we just drew, actually, it has to do with these points, right? So there's the tying on like your forks, but also on forked horns. So they don't have to do, they don't have to completely fill this out. It's just for the ones that it would benefit them. Pattern sort, this is how I like to do it, was with highlighters, have them write their words, and then just go through the rules. It depends on how comfortable you are with them. Eventually I have, he has the whole stack, and he's just going through every single rule and reading every single rule on this day, every week, and checking to see if these words fall into these spelling patterns. And if they do, you know, we write, oh, yeah, so this one's spelled rule 17. These are floss words, right? So at rule 17, I give it a code and I just code all the ones that fell into that pattern. And then you just keep, I just have them go all the way through. And it's a good review just every week. He's reading those every single week. But you may want to do less in the earlier, you know, you're, you're already seeing the word list and you can pull that like on day one, you can pull which one you think it's gonna be ahead of time if you want and put it in their pile. Syllable division, so you write the words, mark vowel sounds with diacritics, right? We're marking the, so I'm slashing the silence. These were all uh, long and these were all short vowels. I just made a note that they were all one syllable words. So it said to highlight or trace in different colors that I meant the syllables. So since they were all one syllable, I, they just got one color, but if they were if it was like raving, ing would be another syllable and I would have underlined that in a different color. Okay, word pyramids. So just have them sounded out. Um, so tell, t, 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 e, tell, t, e, l, t -E l, l. And I don't split up, you know, things that are just one sound, they're just doubled uh, consonants or digraphs or trigraphs or something like that, vowel teams. I, I don't give it a, a new line, I keep it together. And spelling test, explore and correct. Oh, I was just gonna show you really quick the dictionary, because sometimes I get asked what dictionary we use. Um, my elementary school students have used this one, Merriam Webster's Elementary Dictionary. I'll, I'll link it for you in the description box. Like, I'll link everything you see today. 
And I do, it's been, it's worked well for us. I like that there's like color pictures in there and it's a little bit bigger font. And they've got the ABCs here to help them find things in alphabetical order. So yeah, we like, we like this one. If your student came to a stopping point in lessons 15 through 22, you will be in spelling level three. This is the one my, um, I'm currently working through this with my, my middle son and he really likes it. He's done it for a while now, so he knows what's coming up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, so I used to just, um, you know, print my own Etsy ones out for him to do, which works great. Sometimes you don't want extra notebooks and things. So we are using his unofficial RC notebook level three. And this is what a spelling or vocabulary page looks like. So you can do things for the words in their own boxes and there's lines for obviously days that we write. But I, actually, so what I've been doing this year with him is I just got a physical copy. And just as we do our activities, I have just been filling this out like my own key because then I'll just have it <laughs> filled out for when my younger son comes along and it's or it's like a bound book it's a little bit more protected and so it'll last so yeah right now I'm just using this like we pull it out and he can look at it he uses it like a textbook because it's literally it's just going to be blank right I just am making notes like this is uh, lesson five day two I do like to pull I do like to print out the word lists and use it like a bookmark. And I just, I made notes of which McGuffey book lesson it fell into. So like right now we are on lesson five from McGuffey spelling level three, but it's those words are found in McGuffey lesson 16 in the book. So we're actually in here, the various sounds of you. I, I just work along. We just, you know, do this together or whatever, especially when we're doing the analyze words, I have to sit there and like dictate the words to him and everything anyways. So like while he's doing that, while I were doing that, he's just doing his work in here. I hope you can see what that looks like. So if you would like rather buy the hard copy version on Amazon and make a, which I, th I think it's like 20 bucks. Um, it's expensive to print <laughs> stuff. But if you wanna make that like a key that you work along with or kind of use it more like a textbook, you can do it in your, in just a notebook. So just so you saw like this, he did, this was supposed to be a day that he was supposed to do the pyramids. He did it more like stair steps, which is fine, right? I think there are 12 rectangles in this notebook. Um, here he was dividing the syllables using the syllable division steps that I give. This was a day where we were pattern sorting, right? So he wrote his words out. He flipped through all of his rule flashcards and then he made a key, right? And color coded them. Here was one where he um, looked up the words in the dictionary. He, he alphabetized them, looked them up in the dictionary, wrote their part of speech and he wrote in a short, like, simple slide definition. And then he picked three words that he didn't know well and he put them into a, a sentence. This was a write three times. And I'll, I'll show you that in the book because it kind of changes in level three, what they're doing. So they are getting, we're trying to get a better understanding of the words as a whole. And this was a um, analysis day. All right, so analysis here, we're starting to get to multi-syllabic words. So I'm just having him go ahead and put that in with the diacritics and the part of speech. And in the book, you can tell where the breaks in the syllables are because there is a space like butter or butter. You see there's a break there and you know that the, the accent mark will come after the accented or stressed syllable. So there's that accent mark there too. That'll help you understand the schwa vowel, when you guys talk about that as well. Like in truant, we don't say this true ant. We say truant or truant, like an uh or an is sound. That's because it is the, and I forgot, 
It's the first syllable that's accented. This is unaccented, so it can make its schwa sound because we kind of we don't we don't over uh, enunciate the vowels in our unaccented syllables often. Not always, but often. <laughs> Uh, you see this, this U that sounds like ooh. We call that we would say it the the double snake bite or the the snake bite underneath for the U. And I I think it two dots looks like two O's to me, which is like the most common way that you I think of spelling ooh. So to me it makes sense. So let's analyze words, write words three ways, and this time they're gonna write um, a word. It's part of speech. Write the word plus a suffix ed, s, e, s, i, e, s, or i, n, g, and then write the newly formed word. And you can check this along in the dictionary. I was gonna show you one, I wish where I did I do one. All right, so like the first word was shutter, we looked it up, that can be used as a noun or a verb. We always you know, talk about shutter plus ed, and I let him pick. He just gets to look at the words and see if any of those in, you know, inflectional endings work with the word, because every once in a while you'll find one that doesn't. It, it won't work. It doesn't need uh, something like that. But these ones all did. You could add something to them. And then write the newly formed word. So that we came across with the word like mummy. So mummies, I just made a slash through the Y because you end up dropping that Y to add the I-E-S. Right? And then you get mummies, which is a, now it's a plural noun. So stutter goes from being a noun or a verb to stuttering, which is just a mostly just a verb, right? But see, it makes you think about words, doesn't it? And how we use them. Word work. Okay, alphabetize. So I really like, I haven't talked about these very much, but to use these flashcards, we play them all the time for like memory or just for like a warm up. I would teach to alphabetize like this. So F, to start P for prudent, B comes before F. Okay, but say you start getting to ones where there's a bunch of words that start with F. So I go F R or F teach them to go to the next letter, U. Which one? Right? U comes after R. I'd have them start going down. F U R, F U R, R R N. Well, N comes first, so it's furry. So curly comes after B. Right? So once I got um, them all, oh, I'd move that one down and put truant. So it's kind of going across, but down. Then they can pick them up like this. So then they'll have them in alphabetical order, right? And I usually have them do this on the floor or whatever. And then you just go back to a seat. Now he has a pile of them in alphabetical order. And I might check that first or something, but not, I don't necessarily always, depends on how much time you have, right? I'm often working with other kids or whatever. And then have him make a list of it in alphabetical order. And then it says, look up in dictionary and define them. So then he can, has them in alphabetical order already, so then he can just work his way through the dictionary without having to flip back and forth so much. And then uh, define them. So I don't, I think I didn't hear, uh, you saw that he did in his little book. And then to make a note of the part of speech, it says copy an example sentence or write your own. I did this over here in the book. So a lot of times there is an example sentence in the dictionary itself or an example phrase that they can extrapolate into their own sentence. Um, but I just tell him he doesn't have to do all of them. He can just pick, you know, one to three if he didn't know the meaning of it. So he chose murmur, murmured, and turban. Just because murmur and was one of the one, it's that was the actual word, but he didn't know what it meant. So I'll actually let him use it twice with a derivation. Pattern sort. Nothing different there, except that we are now underlining the diphthongs and digraphs, slashing silent letters, marking accented syllables, all information that they can copy straight out of this, or they can try to do it on their own and then check their work. You might have them copy it at first, just so they get used to it and they're kind of studying it, and then ask them to, next time, you know, try to do it on their own and then check their work. Circle any affixes, square any base words. And then here's syllable division rules, right? You just, I just walk you through rules here. And then word pyramids are the same. Test is the same. Let's say you like everything, except you don't really like, let's say you're like, I don't think we need to do syllable division. 
let's say you just or or that's just you, you'd like to add that on later or something like um, instead on that day just play a game of memory with because these all this comes with like two I can't remember if I print if I just printed them out twice or if I gave you two of each I feel like I've done both on different levels <laughs> but make sure you have two of each card and then you can always just play memory with these games on that day instead or spelling word hangman which I like to play a lot too Okay, if your child came to a stopping point between lessons 23 and 32, I would put them in McGuffey spelling level four. How to, how to use this book, right? Here's your list. Um, here's the rest of your list. And then there's a read me section. So this is some stuff that you and your kids want to make sure that you've read and understand, right? There's some suffix spelling guidelines here. There's some affix samples and meanings here. It defines prefixes and suffix for you here. Okay, analyze words, count sounds and write blanks, fill in blanks with phonogram dictated by teacher. Again, you can talk, uh, this is a good time to make sure that they've got their diacritical marks uh, down and that they you give them, make sure they have a brief understanding of each word in the part of speech. It's gonna come up later and it'll be easier if you've just discussed it on day one. Write words three ways. You're gonna write uh, the word plus the part or parts of speech, right here, right? Your second line, you're going to write a prefix plus a word or a word plus a suffix. It says choose from the affix samples on the README page, that one we showed you earlier. Just look and see if they can, if that's something they that would fit with the words from the spelling word list. Also, it's a good thing if you want to have them just get like a piece of paper, you fold it in half and make a bookmark. And it's kind of nice if you just want to jot down those affixes or something like that and their meaning so that they can just, they don't have to keep flipping back and forth. I love like a note taking book bookmark. I just think it's so helpful. Um, and then on the third line, you're going to write the newly formed word and the new part of speech because sometimes the part of speech changes like love with plus ly becomes lovely. It goes from a noun or a verb to a adjective, right? Uh, look up the definition and read it. This is word work. Note the part of speech, copy an example sentence using each word. Feel free to modify your word with an affix. So we're trying to give them some freedom to modify words. And sometimes they don't have to keep the same meaning. You can put the prefix un, right? Or re in the front and have a completely opposite meaning. Pattern sort, uh, write words in a column, labeled by the, label them, code them with your spelling rules, underline diphthongs, die or trigraphs, slash silent letters, mark accented syllable. I'd also say use influencing arrows. We do, like we talked about with that silent E or um, influencing other letters around it. Circle any affixes, square any base words, right? So like, let's again, the word lovely. If you had the word lovely, the base word is love, so you'd square around it. Lee is the suffix, you could circle it. Civil division, this is not changed, but you know, you can have them do it and then check to see if they got it right. Word pyramids has not changed. Test day. All right, if your child came to a stopping point in lessons 33 to 48, those are going to be those lessons are covered in level five. There's six levels, just in case you're wondering how long this video is going to be. And let's take a quick look. Sometimes it might prompt you to make a review word list from the words you missed on spelling tests. So another thing I like to do sometimes you may have just like a sh like a week that's just a mess. <laughs> sometimes you just need to drop something, um, or it's like break, but you don't want to like totally lose your momentum use those flashcards to your advantage. I love to go back and take all the previous, all the lessons we have covered and to do like a drill. You can do right pile, wrong pile one day. And then the next day, you know, use those cards to play memory or go fish. You're just going to be you know, finding two of a kind instead of four um, or spelling man, hangman. just play one of those three games and still keep their minds working on, the sp on spelling in words, you know, but just a way to break things up sometimes when you need to. 
And then the README page, we've got suffix spelling guidelines again, new terms like etymology, root words, antonym, synonym. Um, and I did link, this is in the Etsy version, but to a video called Where Did English Come From? It's a TED Ed. And I think that that is, I like to give the kids some background about language. I hate how people dump on English. Like it's, it's a real pet peeve to me because it just discourages people from trying to engage with it and getting better with it. It's just a more sophisticated language because it has so many inputs into it, you know? And I like that it tell, I'm like, I like it though. It tells a story about the history of that part of the world. And now this part of the world, uh, it's continuing on like, a, you know, when we moved from the European continent to North America, now we have all types of uh, like we, actually Native American words that we use and Native American sit like language cities and like we just continue to now we have more Spanish influence because, uh, you know, being called um, those Spanish colonies and the English colonies and the French colonies, like all being together and you know, land going back and forth and people going back and forth and stuff. So it just continues on. I actually just bought, I'll show you, this is off topic. I'll show you. I just bought this King Alfred's English, a history of the language we speak and why we should be glad we do. Let's be positive about English and not turn our kids off from reading and writing and speaking. <laughs> Anyways, this looks like it's not very long. I'll link this for you too. And I think I'm actually going to read it. I'm doing some history read alouds right now, but I think um, I'm gonna insert this into my read aloud basket. So we'll get to this too. It also says, see the last page of this workbook for a list of sample prefixes, suffixes, and root words. So I did make you guys it add on now to back here on this level, this Latin word parts. We got prefixes, suffixes, and roots. Of course, we have other, you know, we have French, Roman, Greek, uh, specific, ugh, specifically, you know, Old English parts, but those are, the Latin ones are just very common. Okay, again, sorry, analyze words. Um, this time they're getting more independent in level five. So it says to write the word at the top of the rectangle. So uh, what, let's see, what's one of our words? Let's say the word was shrewd. It's the right, shrewd. Then they're going to look up the word in the etymology book, app, or website. And then this is actually, a, this is a link to um, edemonline.com. I do have an etymology book and I also have an app. <laughs> but just for the sake of something easily to communicate to people that are work, this is an online one. Um, pick three colors to highlight or underline any prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Not all words have these, right? So not every word coming out of this book will have those so but just look for them see but you'll be able to tell by looking it up in the etymology dictionary um, if it does so make notes on meaning or word origins that you find so they're just going to study they're just going to put their word up here and get as much information on it as they can right and make some notes write the words three ways this time they're going to write their word break into word parts or add word parts if possible, right? So if it was something like rewind, they can change it to re plus wind. If it was just something like wind, they could take wind plus ing is winding, right? That kind of thing. Then they're gonna uh, write a synonym for their original word here. So a totally different word. So you may need to have a thesaurus handy for them as well. Word work. Look up words in the dictionary and mentally note their part of speech and meaning. Copy an example sentence. So I'm just wanting sentences from them here. They don't need to write out the definitions. Copy an example sentence or write your own that uses your words. Uh, try to write a paragraph using all your spelling words as optional, right? So let's say they wrote some sentences here. What if over here they tried to, they also could try to write a whole paragraph or one or the other, not, maybe not both. Depends on how long it takes them. It also could be like a poem, right? Uh, pattern sort, again, right? So sort each word into spelling rules or so write their spelling words here. And on this side, we're gonna be flipping through. They're gonna be reading rule 13. Is it a contraction? No. Is it an abbreviation? No. Is there T-I-C-I -I and S-I that spell sh at the beginning of any syllable after the first, such as tension, action, and suspicion? 
right? Yes or no? If there it is, then you write that in, co code it with a highlighter, and then code each word. And you'll also find that some words have fallen into more than one pattern. So there may be multiple little colors next to them. Okay, syllable division, same thing. Word pyramids, same thing. <laughs> Spelling test, explore and correct, same thing. Okay, let's talk about the last level. Level six is for if your child stops somewhere between lessons 49 and 64. So this is the last, this is the last level. And something else I want to say about this level is, so my spelling lists only get pulled up to lesson 64, which is here. And look at how much more of the book there is. I also marked, okay, it went over affixes here in the book. And, and just so you know, some, there are sometimes from time to time dictation exercises in there that you can do with them that that week instead of, but that you'd have to be following along in here to see them. They start giving you more notes on your words too as you get farther along. It says, no, these exercises on words of similar sound, instead of being gathered into a single department, are interspersed throughout the book. So they have raised, like lifted up, and raised, destroyed. Prize, as in inspects closely and prize as it to value so homophones right look in here for those notes as you are or have your child look in there and for those notes and that's that's a good thing to discuss on the first day of a new word list on the analyze day so it, but it goes on so after you you can just keep using this same format and you can just keep going through the book after these word lists what i would do is Maybe on day one, because they're also picking up spelling in other ways. You're also picking up spelling from reading, right? And other writing exercises that you're doing, like composition things and grammar. So it's it starts off really, spelling starts off really slow, <laughs> but it snowballs. The, the more they know, the easier it is for them to learn new things. They learn faster and faster. It's so neat to get to see that with kids. So you can just keep working through the book if you want to keep working through it. You can go, you can make up your own um, lists from here. You can give them kind of like what you were doing originally. You can start giving them a spelling test and then just make a new list. Like when you get to 12 words that they've missed. So you went over all of these, just pick the 12 that they missed. Or maybe you want to get it kind of, maybe you're kind of using it for vocabulary too. Maybe you want to pick 12 that they are, were unfamiliar with the meaning. Okay, McGuffey spelling six. All right, so you got your, how to use this book, word lists, uh, read me before starting, study, I sell them to study pages four through five of McGuffey's Eclectic Spelling Book. So pages four through five look like this. All right, it's got all of those um, table of vocals, subvocals, aspirates, substitutes, the consonants, the mutes, right, the silent letters. Take note of the diacritic symbols listed. Again, I think that's a good thing to make a bookmark out of and keep in them as they go. Make a cheat sheet for inflectional ending and suffixes, E, D, I, N, G, S, and E, S, uh, C rules, you know, 14, 16, 20, 22, 24, and 28. Want them to be familiar with adding on those endings. For lesson 31, I'm encouraging them to make a spelling list from all the words they've missed on their spelling tests. After they've gone through all these lists, I have a big review list. Make sure you have a dictionary and etymology resource handy. You will need it. Fill in your word parts table on the last page of this book as you learn new word elements. A sample page has been provided. So as they learn new word elements as they're going through the list. Here's the one that was in the last one, right? It's um, giving you examples, but here's for new parts, right? So they can put what prefix, suffix, or root they learned, its meaning, and the example word here, word or words. And you can write off to the side like what its origin is too, or you know, or or in here in parentheses or something where it came from. Okay, analyze your words. This has not changed from the last level. Oh, I wrote it in with my. This is the same from the last level too, except that you know for the right words three ways. So write your word, break it into parts, or add parts. And then I'd say write a synonym or an antonym, like we just said synonym before, but feel free to introduce antonyms. Word work, right? We're going to want to be using them in sentences. 
You can use any derivative of the word that they want uh, and then write a parallel sentence. See the glossary for a definition if needed. So parallel sentences, I've talked about those before. I like, I really like using them. It's something that I picked up from Beyond Blend Phonics by Don Potter. And it's like you write a, a sentence with the spelling word in it or spelling slash vocabulary word in it. And then you write a second sentence that would come after it that has the meaning of the word embedded in the sentence. So if you wrote, if say your word was useless, you'd say he was useless at football, period. He was of no use to the team. He could not catch, <laughs> throw, or run quickly, <laughs> whatever, right? So you, you could underline the meaning within the parallel sentence and then also underline the spelling or vocab word. Okay, pattern sort, that's the same. Just going through your spelling rules, syllable division, you can have to divide those up. Word pyramids, right? Spelling test, explore and correct. And of course, they'll all have these. So I highly encourage, especially days that you're short on time, to just play memory with them or give them a quick dictation where you could just see how they're doing. You can also give them, uh, just do a quick test midweek, you know, dictate the word to them, have them write down how they think it's spelled and just check. And you can just move forward with just the ones they're misspelling. Like if you're short, you're like, this just takes too long, it's too many words then just focus on the ones that they're not spelling right, right? Okay, so this is our spelling program. And like I said, level six, you can just keep going. Just keep working through the book. Just keep using the same one. You'll, you will need your eclectic spelling book, their program. It's highly helpful to have the flashcards of the rules and the, uh, I love having the spelling word flashcards as well. You could make the hard copy into a key for yourself and future kids if you want. You will need a dictionary. Oh, this is just a fun read. <laughs> and you will need some kind of etymology, like dictionary, app, or website to reference. I hope that helped. I will leave all everything you saw today. I'll link it in the description. Also, write out what lessons in here correspond to what level of the spelling program here. All right, I hope that will help anybody that needed some help finding out how to get going and like where to place their kids in the McAfee spelling levels that I created. All right, thanks, bye.